Okay, now we're ready to do some electrolysis. This is part of experiment 10, electrochemistry. This is part two, electrolysis and aqueous solution. So what we have set up here, we have an electrolysis cell with two graphite electrodes. Um, the electrode on the left is the anode and the electrode on the right is the cathode. So um, we have that set attached to a power supply which is in the back here and on the side here is our voltmeter. Okay, so this is part 2-1. We're doing the electrolysis of sodium sulfate with gr two graphite electrodes. So the first part here is we're going to do a little bit of electrolysis for about 30 seconds to a minute. Alright, so I'm going to reach back here and turn on the power supply. Let's see what happens. You can see some bubbling coming off of both of the electrodes. It looks like the cathode has a little bit more bubbling than the anodes, bubbling about twice as fast, which is pretty interesting. Okay. So now what we're going to do, we're going to turn off the power supply for a moment here. And now I'm going to add 10 drops of phenolphthalein to our solution. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we see it's turned the solution pink, but only really on the cathode section. I'm going to turn our power supply on, back on for a second here. So we see some electrolysis and it's definitely, the pink is definitely coming from that cathode there. It's coming from the cathode. Alright, so now we're going to turn the power supply back off. And now I'm going to turn on the stir. There's a stir bar in there. Let's see what happens when we start to stir. Okay, so we're stirring and look at that. The pink is disappearing. It's disappearing. Wonder why. So remember guys, phenolphthalein turns pink in the presence of hydroxide ions. Alright, so now we're going to do the same, oops, so now we're going to do the same things here, but this time I'm going to put a piece of filter paper in between the two electrodes. So I'm going to create a little wall there. So let's, okay, there we go. Alright, so now let's turn on the power supply. what happens. So now we see, it was kind of hard to see before, but now with that barrier there, we can definitely see that it turns pink right around where the cathode is. All right, so let me turn my electrolysis off. I'm going to remove the barrier. And now let's stir again to see what happens, just to kind of confirm things. And look at that. Disa pink color disappears again. Pretty interesting, right? Okay. So now we're going to do some switching here. We're going to try to do some switching. Okay, so I'm going to set the camera over here on my makeshift camera stand. And now I am going to get this cell out of the way. I'm going to get ready for part 2-2. Two, two. So this time, and I'll show you guys in a second, we are going to have a graphite anode 
and a copper cathode. Let's make sure we're all covered there. Okay, now for the tricky part. So we've got our power supply leads again. A good piece of electrical safety. Always make your manipulations when the power is off. It's very important life skill. Okay. All right, we're ready again. I'm going to pick up the camera. So now, as you can see here, I, the anode is now copper, and the cathode. I'm sorry, the cathode is copper, the anode it is graphite, um, and I poured some sodium sulfate in. I'm gonna add a little tiny bit more. All right, there we go. All right, so now let's do our electrolysis again. Okay, I'm gonna turn on the power supply. Let's see what happens here. Okay, so we have some bubbling coming off of the cathode, the copper. There's also some bubbling coming off of the anode there. Looks like the cathode is bubbling about twice as fast as the anode. All right. Looks about the same as the last cell we tried. So let's turn off our power supply again. Let's add the phenolphthalein. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Looks like it's turning pink again. Let's do some turn the power supply momentarily. Okay. All right. Let's turn off our power supply, and now we're gonna stir for a little bit. The pink disappears again. Looks like it does. Pink is disappearing. All right. And just for kicks, here's my barrier again. I'm going to stick it in. It's a little wet now. Remember the barrier is separating the cathode from the anode. So let's see where that pink color is really coming from. And it looks like it's really coming from the cathode. It's really coming from the cathode there. And to confirm, let's turn the power supply off, take out the barrier and stir again. Okay, and the pink disappears. Okay. All right. So it looks like for part two, three, when we replace the graphite elect cathode with the copper cathode, we get about the same responses as if we had just two graphite electrodes. All right, so let's now move to our next one. All right, so this is two, three. So this time, we are going to let the copper be the um, anode. The copper will be the anode and we'll have a graphite cathode. So let's get the leads back on here. Okay. You might be asking yourself, how does she know which one she's making the anode. And the answer is the leads on the power supply are red and black. So red for your anode and black for the cathode. 
All right. All right, so once again, we are going to add some sodium sulfate. All right, so let's get our stuff ready here. All right, so let's see what we have. Okay, here we go. All right, so now you see that the copper is on the left, so the copper is our anode, and our cathode is still graphite. All right, so the directions say that we're going to turn on the power, so let's do that. And we're gonna let it run for a few minutes and see what we have here. So we looks like we have some bubbling coming off of our cathodes, so that's the graphite side there. Is there anything happening on the copper side? So it does take a little bit of time So we're going to wait. Science waiting is something that we do quite a bit. And I don't know about you, but the bottom looks like it's getting a little blue. And so it's and also on the top there it's bubbling, but it's also getting a little cloudy. So I wonder what's going on. Yeah, the solution is definitely turning blue. You can see it more towards the bottom there. And we definitely have some sort of solid forming. So we're going to let that go for a minute. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to turn on the stirring and see what we get. We're going to let this go for about a minute more. definitely see a blue there on the bottom. And there's some cloudiness on the top, a lot of bubbling coming off of the cathode, but some blue on the bottom. I wonder what's causing that blue color. It's pretty interesting. All right, let's turn on the stirring for a little bit. See if anything different happens from stirring. Well, now the whole solution's starting to turn blue. This was just on the bottom, but now that whole solution's about like a light blue color. Isn't that cool? And there's definitely a precipitate there. It's pretty interesting. Might want to check out your solubility rules, see what that could be. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to add some phenyl phthalene to see what that does. One, two, three, four, five. All right, now, so it's definitely turned pink, which tells us there's some hydroxide in there. And it's kind of with the blue color turning this pretty cool purple color. It's pretty neat. So there you go. There's some electrolysis um, of some sodium sulfate with different electrodes. And we can see here that, you know, if you change what the anode is, you can cause some different chemistry. And it'll be up to you to take a look at those standard reduction potentials and half reactions to see what exactly is going on there. Okay. And we're clear.